Hey everyone, it's Paul with your Bold Profits for this week. And this week, I once again want to focus on kinds of developments that are going on all over every place. And I have been telling you in this channel for some time that this is a unprecedented time in terms of the movement, the adoption of new technology that is just stimulating additional new technology to be developed, to be adopted, which in turn stimulates other new technologies. And I saw a story this week that once again confirms that this is the moment for this. And of course, from your perspective, in terms of following this channel, and please, uh, this is a moment for me to plug this channel, subscribe to the channel, Give our videos a thumbs up if you like the content that we put up and comment below on anything that you have found useful uh, from, from uh, watching any of our, 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 our videos. Um, so I, I saw this story come up in my weekend reading and um, this is a story that talks about the Trump administration calling for a 30% boost in artificial intelligence. And then in the headline, it says quantum spending. And then when you scroll down You'll see here is this little detail says also included in the initiative is $25 million for the U.S. Department of Energy to build a quantum internet, which uses the principles of quantum mechanics to securely transmit data. So if you look at this, you go, well, it's only $25 million. And what is quantum internet anyway? Nobody's heard of this. And the truth is, is that we have been working on different aspects of this for some period of time. And uh, at the same time, I also saw this story from uh, one of the newsletters that I tend to read pretty regularly called Interested in Engineering, which says space-based quantum communication experiment could revolutionize encryption. And while it's talking about encryption, quantum communication, at least for us, is largely means about, is about the internet and it's about using quantum mechanics, ultimately, to make information obviously move faster. You can now have uh, information represented in all kinds of ways. The end result is that we can now start to do things uh, that we previously could not. For example, one of the things that we would need uh, to be able to put colonies in space put colonies on Mars, put colonies uh, on the moon, have lunar stations, space hotels, is for sure we are going to need internet. And the current internet is going to be too slow given the distance that it has to travel and, and the amount of infrastructure it would likely need to get anything like what we need. However, a quantum internet that is significantly faster, in other words, just so much faster that you could just forget about comparing it to anything that we have today. That would really facilitate space travel, space development, lunar development, things on Mars. And so one of the things that if you go back to periods of technological development is how something quite unrelated leads to a number of developments in other places. For example, the original space program led to a lot of the miniaturization that we today use in all of our gadgets. Uh, in other words, electronic components, which used to be rooms full large, eventually became into something that we can carry uh, any place, like in here or in here or in any number of the gadgets that we now carry around in our pockets. These used to take up rooms and rooms full. And now, as a result of the investments made in the space program, we were forced to miniaturize them, set us on a journey that led us to so many different things, whether it be the development of satellites, development of computer technology, chips, miniaturization, obviously the phones that we have today, internet, Wi-Fi, so many different stacking technologies that built what we currently take for granted today. So when you look at something like this, and it just makes you think, hmm, a quantum internet, wow. I mean, those of you who have followed the development of the internet know that the internet was created based on a fairly small grant, kind of like this, uh, from DARPA, which is the research wing of, of, of the US military. And from that, 
comes this enormous world that we today completely rely on. So in seeing this and seeing these stories, it made me think that for sure, this will facilitate all of the developments that are going on right now with space. And as many of you know, right now, there are three rockets shooting towards Mars, one from the United Arab Emirates, one from China, one from the United States, all going to Mars to do various things. Elon Musk, as you know, SpaceX is, their explicit goal is to make the human species an interplanetary one. So it's not simply to just get to the moon in a couple of years and then get to the Mars and just send the rockets back. It's to ultimately create a civilization that spans various planets. And for that, we will for sure need much faster communication like the quantum internet. And then when you think through, well, what is that going to push? What is that going to facilitate? Well, the one thing for sure is that it's going to facilitate uh, the use of light. In other words, uh, our current ways of communication by electronic signal, uh, in other words, it's, it's unlikely to be fast enough. So if you use quantum uh, uh, mechanics and need a quantum internet, you're likely going to need a slightly different way of actually communicating. In other words, the form needs to be different. And those of you who remember the boom in the 1990s, 1999, there used to be stocks like Juniper and others that tried to do things with light and uh, they, they succeeded to some extent. However, today there, we have jumped in terms of where we are with being able to use light to communicate. And I believe that these technologies are going to be critical to the development of something like the quantum internet. And then in turn, be critical to the development of space and our ability to communicate, whether it be to the moon, to Mars, to other places, or to spaceships as they travel to space. So light-based computing, light-based networking is, I believe, an area that is going to directly benefit as a result of this. What about uh, a second area that clearly would need to make jumps? In other words, we are today in the late stages of silicon. Uh, Moore's law is beginning to fade. And yes, we have uh, new chip materials in, in uh, gallium ar arsenide, which is called GAN, silicon carbide, and there's some other experiment ones out there. There's very high potential in materials like graphite, like graphene, which have the potential to totally revolutionize uh, what we can do uh, with, with chips. And then I've also seen a number of uh, articles talking about the use of diamonds, uh, being able to also uh, act uh, in, in the same way for our computing needs. And so what I believe you're going to see is the development of new materials that can provide faster computing speeds, more efficient computing speeds, and also uh, Computers computing that need a lot less energy than we currently do because there will certainly be a premium on that as you need to certainly go into space or certainly as you need that energy to compute at faster rates. Um, so you can see now once again, there, there's this Lollapalooza effect that I believe is unfolding where you've got so many different stacking technologies that can really start to morph out and start to build new industries, new businesses, new companies that can completely, completely and utterly remake the world from where we currently sit. And for many people, this world can almost seem like it's sort of science fiction. However, if you think back to uh, perhaps 100 years ago when we had so many different inventions, developments all come about about the same time, whether it be from uh, railways to telegraph to telephone to radio to television, uh, cars, then planes. Um, and you can see that anyone that was going through that, uh, they would have obviously gone through an enormous amount of technological development. I believe that right now with all of these technologies that are in place, the best investment opportunities require you to look forward, look forward and anticipate new industries, new companies, new ways of doing things. And those are the companies that are going to give you the biggest returns. And many people will say, well, Paul, I'm going to wait until 
five years later. However, you can go and look, whether it be the airlines or any of even electricity to some extent, the biggest returns, the enormous, gigantic, thousands of percent returns were all gotten by the early investors. And if you want stocks like that, ideas like that, Subscribe to my Profits Unlimited service. Uh, this is what we focus on, America 2.0. This is what we refer to this period of time, America 2.0, the remaking of America as a result of megatrends and all of this technology that is all unfolding and supporting each other, stacking one on top of each other to create a new world. To check Profits Unlimited, click on the strong hands above. This takes you to my America 2.0 presentation, which tells you about this general idea, invites you to subscribe, so check it out. And of course, uh, come back next week and I'll have another video for you. Until then, this is Paul saying bye.